Hey everyone, this is my implementation of the primordial particle system. It's this system by these guys over at the Artificial Life Laboratory in Austria, led by Thomas Schmickel. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, this is my version. Um, it has some sliders on it, so you can change things dynamically. In the formula, there's this thing called beta, and I can change the beta value here. I can also change the radius and the velocity. The radius is normally 5 in the system, but I can scale it up or down. And I can also change their velocities scale. And it really lets you see some interesting behaviors. Um, so this green sliders over here affect only the green particles and right now I only have green particles but I have other experiments where I can add red, blue, and they all interact differently with each other. I'll show those later. Um, but if I change some velocity you can see it slow down and they don't move which is normal. If I change the radius something really interesting happens. The radius is their little area of perception so if I turn it down really far, they start not to perceive anything but their direct neighbors. If I turn it far, far down, they start to spread out. Look at that. And then if I pump it up and down, I can get them into this crystal state. Let me put it back up and show you. They're interacting. Now they're not, but watch. Look, there's one right here that started forming and he will start the whole system going again eventually. This is back to the normal parameters. He's starting to form and wander around this world and consume other particles. You get these different stages of life with these particles. Anyway, he will wander around and start up the system again. But if I change the radius down really fast and then pump it like before and then gradually put it up, these particles will never interact with each other again. It's kind of like in, they're in this crystal form where everyone's in their low energy state. No one wants to react with each other anymore. Even though they're at the same parameters as when I first started the experiment. So let me show you what's going on. If I slow them down, I can get these little boundary regions. And in the middle of these boundary regions are very uniform particles. It's kind of like a crystal, a super saturated sugar solution that will not crystallize unless you add a grain, which that little guy down here was like a grain. But right now nothing's uh, crystallizing. And if you turn up the velocity and slowly go down, you can see these boundary regions more clearly. When everything's moving very fast, it's hard to see. It's like the crystal lattice is moving too fast. And if you move it up really fast and then go down really quickly, there's not a lot of crystallized structure. It's like we're annealing metal or something when we cool it down slowly. Watch when we cool it down. Slowly, you get the crystal formations again. You get these boundary regions. So let's try to get it back to the normal state. So what I found was if I increase beta, everything's back to the normal state, but it's not uh, making these little biological life forms. So, but if I increase beta up to like scale of three, and back down to a scale of one, I get the creatures again. <laughs> but now the creatures have mostly devoured all their little nutrients, they call them in the spaces. So uh, it doesn't look exactly the same as before. It's almost like the system has a memory and it's really neat. But let's, let's change the radius, see if we can get them to spread out a little bit more. Go back to normal. Another thing I added was alpha blending to make them look more 
cellular. It also lets you see the density in one area. If we turn it all the way down, you see only the very dense particles. This little red one here is the first particle ever created. In the simulator, it's kind of neat to watch him progress through the, the world here and see where he ends up. And you can also change the hertz, how many times the simulator gets spewed to the graphics card. Just have it at 60 right now. And I can run this at um, 4,000 frames a second. Right now it's running slow so that my screen capture right here will get most of the CPU. But right now you can see I'm only running 12% of the CPU. Uh, but 4,000 frames a second, these things run really fast. It's just I can't show it to you. <laughs> um, so some other things that uh, I've made are these systems where I have many different particles. Uh, red, blue, another red, and kind of flesh color. And I get heartbeats out of these things. Um, see these blue and red regions? In another system, I made up these blood vessels that follow a slightly different formula and these red ones travel along the vessels. It's really cool and some really interesting behaviors. I'll be releasing some of these on new videos, but I probably won't make them public. So comment to the pinned comment that I put in the video, and I will reply to that when I post a new video that won't be public to everybody, but I'll post a link in there. That way you guys, if you're interested, you can see it. Um, I know most people probably won't be interested in this. And if you guys have any more requests to change parameters, let me know. I'd love to add more of these slider bars to do different things. Um, I got some really cool galactic behavior at beta negative three. I'll show that in the next video. Okay, guys, have fun simulating your own life, and I'll see you later.